Welcome to an introduction to spaces in school AI. Spaces are similar to sidekicks. There's a few minor changes in the settings, but it fairly works the same. Um, spaces is something that you can create for your students to interact again with a chatbot. Pretty much everything you see in School AI is based on a chatbot interaction helping you. But Spaces is a little bit more built out um, for your students to use than Sidekicks. And sometimes the settings are just kind of already there for you. Um, School AI didn't build necessarily a bunch of Sidekicks for you to choose from. They expect you to go in and kind of build them from scratch using plain English language. Whereas Spaces kind of falls back on the fact that there are hundreds or thousands of them already available for you that you can use, open up, and then change the settings on, restrict it further. Maybe um, there is a tutor space in there for math and you want to narrow it down to a focus of just third grade math. Um, you can do that. and uh, You can build on somebody else's work. It creates a whole copy for you that you can then customize for yourself and use. And so there's a bunch of different ones already made for you. And as you can see here on the launch pad, it says find a space. There's a thousands and thousands of them ready to go. There's also a navigation element up here on the top. If I click on spaces, I can discover from thousands of them. I can create my own from scratch. And then sessions, you can look at all the sessions of spaces and sidekicks that you've created in the past. Now, next to finding a space, there's also create a space right here. Um, and then down below here, a lot of these down here are spaces as well um, that have been created that are just on a particular topic. It's beginning of the school year, so you'll find back to school is highlighted. Teachers are still learning about how to use school AI and professional development. Well, they've got that for you as well. And then spaces to help launch and create materials um, at the beginning of the school year. So what I'm gonna do here is go to spaces up on top and I'm gonna choose discover, which is the same as clicking on find a space. So that you can see the kinds of spaces that are available to you. At the very top, you can search by particular standard if you'd like. Um, I'll get back to that in a moment. Below that, spaces for everyday use. You can create a sidekick in here as well, which is a form of space. Um, bell ringers. These are bell ringers to introduce a topic, ask students how they're feeling about the topic. And basically it kind of fills in most of it for you. Then you just kind of go in and say, this is what I want to ask about. There's also exit tickets for the end of the school day or end of a particular class period um, that you can do the same thing to find out how they feel after class. They also have Video Explorer, which allows you to copy and paste in the address of a YouTube video, and it will generate a chat bot on that topic from the video to talk about that video, and will even automatically pause the video at particular points to ask the student questions about what they've learned. Now, to see all of these for everyday use, you can click right here on See All. That will expand it. You have book explorers. You can chat up just like I did in the previous um, tutorial on building a sidekick. I used um, the character of Brian from Chat Hatchet in order to create a chatbot. Book Explorer kind of guides you through that if you'd like to go that route. Career exploration chatbot, choose your own adventure. You can create an adventure based on a topic and it will create scenarios and ask the student to make decisions. Historical figure chatbots. Again, bell ringers and exit tickets. Topic explorer. On any topic, you can build a chatbot, a tutoring session, and video explorer. These are the more popular ones. And if you just click on them, you can create one based on that. So if I wanted to, I could go here to historic figure chatbot. I'll give that a moment to load. And it says, please just simply enter the historic figure you want your students to chatbot. It's going to proactively share interesting facts and invite them to ask their own questions. And again, just like in the previous lesson on Sidekicks, you can monitor how the students are um, interacting with that. This experience is intended to be used with deceased, historically significant individuals. So if you threw in someone who's still alive today, well, I mean, the body of work and the body of statements by that individual aren't complete. So if they change their minds about particular topics, 
the chatbot might not necessarily be as accurate as finding the entire embodiment of the work of somebody. They throw in here a historic figure. They give you an example of Harriet Tubman. Um, I can go in here and let's see. Um, I'll go ahead and go um, Thomas Jefferson. Okay. From here, I can just start the preview to see what it would look like, play with it a little bit, or I can launch. I can also add it to my favorites or share this using the share button. But there is also a more options. How about custom instructions? You may give the AI a specific agenda or instructions for the conversation. Um, I want you to specifically talk about your body of work regarding the Constitution and United States laws. Describe your students. My students are fourth grade students. And then I hit launch. Okay, I can add it to Google Classroom. I can use a space code right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that URL and go copy. I'll open up a new tab to see what it would look like for my students. And I'm gonna say in this case, my student's name is one. Good day to you. I'm Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States and the principal author of the Declaration of, Const of Independence. Did you know I was deeply involved in creating the laws that guide our nation? Tell me, what do you know about the Constitution or laws of our country? I know the Constitution is the basis for a lot of our laws. Indeed, you're correct. It's like a rule book for our country. It sets up how our government works, protects the rights of the people. Why do you think having rules like these is important for our country? So people can know what the laws are and where they came from. Precisely. And then it just goes through a little bit about that. Why do you think it's important for people to know their rights and responsibility? So they know what they can do and not do. Exactly. Can you think of any responsibilities we have? Um, looking after each other, like when we're sick or poor. Just going to try and use the language of a, of a younger person here. Can you think of other ways we can contribute? How about voting? And so as a student, I can go through here and I can kind of veer a little bit. I can say, why did you write? And they can go up here as a student, go always oh, said Declaration of Independence. So I'll say, why did you write? the Declaration of Independence. So I'm very off, I'm not answering the question. And it gives me a response, but then once again goes into, how do you think these ideas are important for us today? And then there is a settings. What if you wanna move it over to Espanol? You can move this over to Espanol if you want. You can also have the chatbot speak if you'd like. So up here, underneath each of these, you notice there's a speak button. I'll click on that. Good day to you. I'm Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States and the principal author. And you can pause that. And students can also respond using voice if they'd like. So how do you think these ideas are important for us today? Well, it's important that students be able to say what they believe in. And then I'll send the message. 
So you can have it speak. You can use the micro microphone to speak back to the historic figure as well. Now, just as I mentioned with the um, sidekicks, when you click away from this, you can see as a teacher that it says that Juan is engaged in understanding laws and their origins, has a little snippet of the current conversation. But you can also go through here and see that the headline is that he's engaged in understanding laws and their origin. The student provides relevant responses and shows an understanding of the Constitution's purpose. However, the interaction lacks depth and critical engagement. And maybe, you know, as a third grader, you don't quite expect that, but maybe you do. And maybe this will help you try to understand. Maybe, you know, Juan needs to ask some deeper questions. And as you can see, you can see the entire conversation. You can pause your chatbot anytime you want. You can end this, or you can invite other students in if they showed up late for whatever reason. Okay, if I go back to Launchpad, down on the bottom, it says historic figure chatbot, Thomas Jefferson. I could go in here and click on this again, and I could go up here and rename this. Thomas Jefferson chatbot. I can add tags as well to make it easy to search through all my chatbots for what I'm looking for. I'll go to Launchpad and as you can see it now says Thomas Jefferson chatbot. Also under spaces, under sessions here, you can see there it is as well. All right, so back to spaces again. I'm gonna go back to discover because we just kind of jumped into the historic figure chatbot here. I'm gonna use my back button and go back to the main discover page here and scroll down. You have subject tutors for all ages. You can see um, all of them right here. Arts and humanities, economics, English, health and fitness, history, literature, math, and so forth. Technology, social studies, science, even test prep. Any of these you can leverage if you want. So if you went over here looking for a math tutor, you can simply click on it. And it's gonna say this is a K through 12 tutor, but you have more options. And you can go in here and say, my students are fourth grade students, and I want you to give them examples related to their questions and help them through those examples. Um, try to avoid homework help um, by providing them answers related to or giving them questions related to the question they ask. And again, you can monitor to make sure the students aren't using Maria, the math tutor, to just do their homework because you can look at all interactions that you've created in this chatbot. I'm gonna go back to Discover. Featured collections, you can see all collections right here. Back to school, generating success, history comes to life. Ah, so they already have some built-in historical figure chatbots. Fred Frederick Douglass, Amelia Earhart, George Washington, George Washington Carver, Madame Curie. Martin Luther King Jr., Neil Armstrong, Socrates, Harriet Tubman, Leonardo da Vinci, and so forth. So these give you examples of ones that have been previously made that you can utilize if you'd like, and then just say, this is my audience uh, grade level for students. You've also got Women's History Month, um, and so you can use those that are in there. You've got Test Prep, World History, so I click on that one. Native American history, World War I, ancient Egypt, medieval times, the Civil War, ancient Rome, World War II, and so forth, to give you examples. And you simply click in there, make some adjustments, um, and it'll run. Or you can use that to get ideas of other ones that you can create under spaces, create a space. Okay, I'm going to go back to Discover and keep on going here. They also have created by teachers like you. So these are ones that... Um, other teachers have made, they copied, put into the system. And so when you create one, you can make adjustments as well. Icebreakers, reflecting and planning, welcome back staff, grading, planning, creating, teacher appreciation letters, um, service project planners, Cinco de Mayo, climate change, Arbor Day, food webs, women in space, Black History Month, multiplication, book recommenders, um, world civilizations, and so forth. So lots of ones in here as well. There are featured creators who are pretty prolific in the ones they make. This one has 261 spaces. And then you can also do it by subjects. 
So if you wanted to create world language, if you were teaching Espanol, you can go in here, the world language, and you can go in and look for Spanish, Spanish cafe, click on that, um, and you can launch it. Your students can go in and have a conversation with an immersive virtual Spanish language speaker. They have some featured experiences. And then they have, of course, the ones that are popular um, that you can go in as well. And then, of course, you can create your own space, too, on top of that. If you go in to create a space, you're going to give it a title. You're going to give it a prompt. You can even choose standards. You can even add files for it to refer to when it gives answers. Create a cover image. So if I went in here and I said, um, let's see, I'll do one on mitosis and meiosis. I want you to be a tutor on the subject of mitosis and meiosis for seventh grade students. Ask questions and provide answers. Standards. If I go here to add a standard, I can go in here and say, okay, what grade level, which standards, I'll start there, which standards, well, I want the California standards. Um, I specifically want seventh grade um, and I want the subject of, let's see here, science, seventh grade life science. And I'll even try meiosis and see if there's anything in there. And of course I could be, here we go. So I said cells, students know plants and animal cells contain many thousands of different genes. Uh, multicellular organisms develop, their cells differentiate, cells function differently, mitochondria, so forth. So you know what, I'm gonna go through and say, you know what, you know, I'm gonna use that standard, that standard, that standard, that one, ah, mitosis. I'll use that one, mitochondria, characteristics, organ functions between individual organs. Um, students know that white light is a mixture of many wavelengths. Students know the nucleus. I'll throw that one in. Okay, so I'm gonna grab these standards and I'm gonna close the window. And as you can see, the standards are listed and you can go in and throw away any of those that you change your mind on later. You can upload PDFs and have additional information. Um, it has um, add standards, a cover image, a subtitle and description if you'd like. Um, cover image. Ooh, if I have an image, I can upload it or I can generate with AI. And it's going to look at the information I provided thus far and see if it can't generate an image related to it for a cover image for this particular chatbot. While we're waiting for that, you can add in the subtitle, a description, um, student description, if you'd like. So I've got a cool little um, thing in here. If you don't like it, you can regenerate it. But I'm going to stop here with these, and I'm just going to go ahead and save and launch. So as you can see, the questions are a little different. It's pulling in standards and other things too for the space. Um, I'm going to go to space code. Of course, you could also tie it to Google Classroom. Open up a new tab, paste this in so you can see what the student experience will look like. And I'm going to say this particular person is um, John and John's gonna join. So students don't have to have chat uh, ChatGPT. They don't have to have school AI accounts. This is open for them to jump in. Hey there, ready to dive into the world of cells and learn about mitosis and meiosis? We'll explore how cells divide and why it's super important for life. Let's kick things off with the question, do you know what the main purpose of cell division is? And I'm gonna say to make more cells. I'm not sure. Gonna think about this, apply it to what it knows. All right, so cell division is all about making more cells. There are two main types, mitosis, meiosis. Do you wanna learn more about how each process works? Um, Sure. Okay, and it's gonna start with mitosis, going through this. Here's how it works, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. Why do you think having identical cells is important for your body? 
I'm going to play dumb. I'm not sure. And it will go through and explaining this. Next, let's look at meiosis. Would you like to know how it's special? And so I can keep this conversation going. And again, as a teacher, I can close this up and I can get as many students as I have. If they go in here and they interact, this is going to allow me to look at the conversations they're having. And you'll notice it says that student demonstrates a basic understanding but needs more support. And you can see the conversation as it goes here. It gives you as many students as you have. It gives you input on where they stand on their understanding of mitosis and meiosis. Are they answering the questions? Or are they just trying to get the chatbot to teach them because maybe they weren't paying attention in class? Who knows? All right. So if I go back to Launchpad at the bottom of it, you can see there is the mitosis and meiosis and spaces underneath sessions. There is all of these as well but also under Discover, you can go right here and you can go in California, pick your grade level, I'll say fourth grade subject. I'm gonna say this is English language arts and then they give you strands. We'll give a moment for that to pop up. There we go. And I can go through here and say, you know what? I'm looking for speaking and listening standards. And then what it's going to do is look for spaces that are tied in some way, shape or form to California fourth grade speaking and listening standards. And then from here, I can click on these um, and then use them in my class as well. Wanted to make sure you knew about that feature in Discovery as well. And anytime you want, you can reset that to go back and then use it again. So I'll stop here. If you have any questions about the use of spaces, um, you can feel free to contact me and I'll help you set up a space that does exactly what you're trying to do with your students. Thanks.